to everyone, or can we? The station that leaves no listener behind, KCAA. You're on board KCAA's Inland Talk Express. KCAA, Loma Linda, 1050 AM. The station that leaves no listener behind. Hello, world, family, and friends. Welcome to the E-Factor Radio Show. I'm your host, Cornelius Bryant, and we're here today with our special guest, Jackie Dobbins. How you doing, Jackie? Good, good. All right, Jackie, you know what? Your biography is so long and filled with so many impressive things. What I'm going to do, I'm going to let you tell us about it. So you tell the world all about yourself. Well, I can't even tell you about all about myself, but I can share with you some of my highlights. I'm a revenue generating strategist, and what that means is that I help individuals, businesses, and organizations generate revenue through marketing strategies. Okay, so give me some examples of how you help. Okay, so everything from any type of embedded commands, when you, you typically look at situations where they say, okay, we want um, for our customer or our client to do X, Y, or Z. If you don't give them something to do, guess what they don't do? They Nothing. don't do anything. Exactly. Right, okay. So I come in and I helped with embedded call to action commands to make sure that their phones are ringing, that they're capturing the contacts that they want to have so they get the desired results that they want for themselves. Okay. Well, if, if just, just so people know, I know everybody see the red cups. And you know what red cups usually mean, right? Yeah, that's not the type of messaging I necessarily wanted to have out here, Cornelius. But go no, ahead. No, no, but no, I'm just letting them know that this water needs cups. It's not nothing else in this these is very red true. cups. So these red cups are filled <laughs> with water. So we start talking and stuff that goes, oh, the red cups got them going. Right, right. Got them going. No, but that's good because I know even like me myself, a lot of times, you know, I get started doing something and then I get so busy, I forget about these different things, mm-hmm. especially depending on how many people you have working for you or your operation. Like me, I'm almost like a one man operation. Right. But from time to time I do get help. But for the most part, then I'll do I do this. My habit is I'll take and I'll write down something on a piece of paper or something. Yes. Oh yeah, I gotta do this. And next thing you know, where's the paper? Right. I forget all about it. Right. So that's what you probably do help p- keep people in line and on, on task. Well, actually, keeping them in line, that's true. I've been accused uh-huh. of that a time or two or ten. And keeping them on task, absolutely. The biggest challenge, though, is that we don't necessarily have any type of a blueprint of what to do, right? how to do it. You know, and you go and you to this shiny object, you go to a, like a seminar or something, and you go, oh, that was a great idea. And the biggest fail stop is the lack of implementation. That's the biggest challenge. I used to do uh, coaching, business coaching, and that was by far the most frustrating thing was that I'd have this great idea, and it was specifically for them, and they would go, because they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't have the follow-through, and that's why they hired me. And so to your point, when you have those lists, it's definitely an idea, a good idea for you to outsource that to someone that will do that. Right, right. Be like, okay, did you take care of this? Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. I'll do it on Monday. Yeah. And it, it never happens. Yeah. Tomorrow's not on the calendar. Right. And Monday's there quite a few times. So that's why it doesn't get done. That's it. Yeah. Because I know I'd be like, okay, um, <laughs> I'm going to do it right now. Then as soon as I hang up the phone or get off the email or whatever it is, something else comes Squirrel. through. And I, <laughs> oh, man. Then a day later, I, oh, I forgot to do this. I forgot to do that. It's, that's pretty common, unfortunately. Yeah. And it's, it's a habit of procrastination. I'm a professional procrastinator. Oh, wow. Look at you wearing that badge very proudly as well. No, it's not I'm proud, but, you know, you got to, <laughs> sometimes you got to own it. This is you true. Know, I'm a, just a procrastinator. Like, oh, oh, they'll be like, we need it by tomorrow at 10. I'll say, okay, all right. Then I'll, oh, well, I have to 10 o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> and then 9 59 and Ryan, 59 seconds. 9 o'clock was, oh, I got to get this done. <laughs> then I go, oh, I got to get this done. I got to right. get that done. So now I'm pushing to get it all done. True. Then I finish right at the last time. I'll be like all proud of myself. Whew. I got it done, not knowing, you know, it's an easy way to do it, yes. start beforehand. Yes. And so that would be a little reminder, did you get it done? Oh, okay. Yeah, so you're not under the gun. Right, right. And that's not the link thing. What, tell me about this project you're working on. Oh, I'm so excited. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's my baby. Uh-huh. Uh, I'll share a little bit. I'm going to be very measured in my description of it. So okay, it's, be very measured because we got a long way to go. Okay, well, okay. let me, let me, uh, let me, uh, 
It's much more than mentorship uh -huh. is the name of the organization. And we're so excited because we're at a pre-launch stage right now. And basically the reason that I've taken it on, taken it on board is because one of my clients, he's a mentor. And I had done this module and this program for him. It was fantastic, if I can modestly say. And it was fantastic. And I found out that he was unfortunately in interfacing with the youth. He wasn't following any of the modules that I had prepared for him. And it just broke my heart because I thought, wow, you're just dialing it in. And especially when, you know, being a black woman, I want to see people that look like me that are treating us. I believe that membership has its privileges. You should not treat someone less than right. because they look like you. You should treat them more than because they look like you because you have that in common. You have that commonality. And it just wasn't happening. And so I said, oh, what should I do? And I prayed. I'm a woman of faith. I prayed and I said, okay, what would I do if it were mine? And I said, hmm. If it were mine, I would go by what my experiences were growing up as a kid. So I'm second generation entrepreneur. My parents uh, ran a successful janitorial business. And they would have these meetings where their clients would come to our home. I called them brown juice parties. Mm. You know, they were, the brown juice was flowing. And the great part about it was it was several bank presidents and entrepreneurs. And so I had, I had excellent association growing up. Okay. My dad spoke seven, eight languages. So it was like United Nations in our house. Right. Right. So I said, what if I was able to provide something in modern day for these, these students where they could see what the possibilities are. And I, that's why I came up with the AI aspirationally inspired is what the filter of the, and the lens of what all of our programs will do, and they'll provide the opportunity for black and brown youth specifically to saddle up and cozy up to and have mentorship and presenters that are paraded through that will show them what's possible for them. So it's not the AI like the AI on no, TV? No, no. Okay, so we just want to get people confused. Yes. That it's actually you generating these thoughts and not Correct. The AI. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm, yeah. Don't get me started on that. So okay. you and I've had that conversation before yes, yes. and we don't need to let everyone else hear that. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. But when you say this, so your target audience, you say is black and brown. Yes. It's so can anybody join it? Even though your target audience is black and brown, you don't of discriminate. Course it's any, no, not at all. It, okay. and, and the reason that it is that is because when I looked at Edutopia and some of the other chronicles that teachers are reading and in subscribing to, that was the biggest gap. That was the biggest area with black and brown students that were not being catered to. It's like recognizing that someone that is underserved does not mean they are undeserved. And that's right. not a play on words. Right. So, see, because you talk about words, so I'm going to go back because I want to make sure not only do I understand what these different words mean, but our audience understands. Because of course. When you're in certain professions, there's different jargon. So, sure. what is edutopia? Edutopia. What does that mean? Edutopia and Edweek are a couple of the chronicles that teachers subscribe to. Uh. So in essence, I'm able to, because I subscribe to them as a result of this project, I'm able to see what are their conversations, what are they talking about, what are some gap stops, what are some of the, the um, who should we be catering to, how should we cater to them, what are some of the missing links, what are they seeing that is just a continual failure. And I saw that uh, enormously they were saying that it was black and brown students. Right. And so, that were not being served. Not being served. So when we say cater to, we're not talking about like just give them some, but you can talk about creating a platform for them to grow. For them to grow and to thrive, absolutely. Right. So I like to look at it from the standpoint of they may seem like challenges or maybe they've hit a couple of hiccups and, you know, someone may deem them as this being their last opportunity for them to not get kicked out of school. I think of it more as... They're emerging talent that just ha hasn't been tapped yet. Right. And so if we spend some time with them and we sh parade in front of them, uh, say some a recent college graduate, for example, or someone that is a, an active sheriff or someone that uh, we have on our team, a gentleman that just retired last year after 40 years in education teaching math, an African-American male. And he was a college professor for uh, city and statewide. 
And this is someone that looks like us, looks like him. And so a student would say, whoa, I didn't know there'd be that type of an opportunity for me. What does that look like? Right. And it's important, like you say, identify yes. with. Because in certain areas, you know, the people you identify with, there are, no, there are nothing like the ones you're talking about. And we're going to get into that later about, like say, about the uh, sheriff and the firemen. Mm -hmm. But these are the kind of things that we need to put in front of our kids. Absolutely. And, you know, even though we say this is black and brown, but the thing I noticed, because I work with juveniles, mm -hmm. and I work in all these different systems, is that there's just as many whites. Absolutely. Agreed. Whites in these certain, but it goes all the time. It, it depends on their economic state. Correct. That's the main factor in how you're looked at, your economic state. And so they generally put those in the class with them. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, like you said, we need to cater to these particular groups. And it's more op that you have somebody who's black and brown, like you say, they'll get less treatment or yes. less recognition yes. because we're clumping them all in the same category. Yes, you yes. Know, we're not taking our time to say, okay, let's look at the situation that they have to face because it's a different situation at home, your environment, all that. And so that's why this program is going to be so good. Mm -hmm. And I know that. And as a matter of fact, that's how we met. Exactly. From, from trying to reach these goals. Yes. And so, you know, we're going to take a break here in a few minutes. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about it. But just for us, when you, we, we met, let's tell, tell a story about that. Because you went on my website, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And you found me. And then we talked. You know, it's funny because I talk to so many people all the time. They come, they, oh, we, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And then you go, yeah, yeah, well, you know, let, let's get together, let's talk about it. And right. then it falls through. Right. There's no follow-up. Right. There's no follow-up. Right. Right. Then you call, hey, um, I thought we were going to do this. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, we were going to do it. But John, John said that, you know, John didn't call me back. I go, oh, but I thought you were the, the engineer running right. This, right. Ship, this train. Right. Oh, yeah, but I was with John. And so, you know, a lot of times that's the problem. Yes. We get in situations where we set up to help these people, mm -hmm. but then it falls through. Yes. And that's a problem a lot of time with them. They're disappointed exactly. because people come with things and they fall through on them. Exactly. And if you I know. can interject right here, yes. that's one of the reasons that I've created a level one, two, and three of the mentorship program. Because to your point, it's typically a one and done and then they never see these people again. And we don't know what their background is as far as with their family of origin. We don't know if there's an absentee parent. We don't know any of those structure. So this is an opportunity for them to go through our training three times in a year. Right. A school year. So that that way they'll be able to say, oh, that's my mentor, you know, Mr. Matthias. Uh -huh. You know, this is my mentor. This is the, the presenter was Mr. Bryant. The mentor the, or the presenter that came by was Mr. Main, Professor Main. It, it, it gives them more of that. And then the other thing that is so neat is that we're doing adventure days, which is why I contacted you. Right. Because I said, I don't know if I can take these people outside and they're not going to embarrass me. Uh -huh. And so I said, this doesn't make any sense. And I said, if I could have someone that would teach them the proper fork to use and how to behave in public. And I said, there's got to be an etiquette, someone that teaches etiquette somewhere. And then I share with you our first conversation. I don't know if you remember this. I called you a, a unicorn. Yes, yes. And you know what we're going to do? Because I am a corn. And so we're going to pick that up on the other side of this commercial. We'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> Radio has openings for one hour talk shows. If you want to host a radio show, now is the time. Make KCAA your flagship station. Our rates are affordable and our services are second to none. We broadcast to a population of 5 million people. Plus, we stream and podcast on all major online audio and video systems. If you've been thinking about broadcasting a weekly radio program on Real Radio plus the internet, contact our CEO at 281 599 9800. 281 599 you can Skype your show from your home to our Redlands, California studio where our live producers and engineers are ready to work with you personally. A radio program on KCAA is the perfect work from home avocation in these stressful times. Just type KCAARadio.com into your browser to learn more about hosting a show on the best station in the nation or call our CEO for details 281-599-9800. 
And now, the voices of KCAA with an exciting announcement. Want to hear NBC News or KCAA anywhere you go? Well, now there's an app for that. KCAA is celebrating 25 years and our silver anniversary with a brand new app. The new KCAA app is now available on your smart device, cell phone, in your car, or any place. Just search KCAA on Google Play or in the Apple Store. One touch and you can listen on your car radio, Bluetooth device, Android Auto, or Apple CarPlay. Catch the KCAA buzz in your earbuds or on the streets, celebrating 25 years of talk, news, and excellence with our new KCAA app. Just do it and download it. KCAA, celebrating 25 years. All right, welcome back to the E Factor Radio Show. I'm your host, Cornelius Bryant, special guest, Jackie Dobbins. Jackie, right before we went to break, you said something about me being a unicorn. <laughs> and I, and I, I laughed because they used to call me at work, they used to call me corn. Ah. And, and so that's why I was laughing about that. So, what do you mean by the unicorn? Just someone that is, is so rare. It's like having a latent need. You don't even know you need it. Uh huh. And then I didn't even, real talk, I didn't even know if there was such a thing that I was dreaming up in my head. So I was already excited. And then when you responded, I said, oh, these are my people. Right. These are my people. And because of why we're structuring it, so we'll have these adventure days. And I envision us going to say Maggiano. Have you ever been to Maggiano's? No. Oh but we'll, my gosh. Well, wait, let me stop. Yeah. Put Maggiano's on the list. See, <laughs> okay. we, we got audiences here, so they're going oh, okay. to help us do all these things. So next time you come back, I can say, oh, yeah, I know. Okay, but <laughs> okay. I'm sorry about that. Go ahead. No, don't apologize. So it is a family-style Italian restaurant. Uh-huh. And they have several locations. I, I've heard that they have one even in Nevada. Uh, but this one is over uh, by South Coast or Costa Mesa, somewhere in Orange County. And what we'll do is have them come there. You know, we'll uh-huh. take the kids. I already have some of the team that are willing to be chaperones, which is like, yay us. And then also um, they'll be able to meet again with their mentor slash presenter and be able to do really bond over breaking bread. Right. And be in an upscale restaurant. And thanks to you, they'll know how to behave themselves. And if there's any type of a disruption in their behavior, then all I'm going to ask them is, you attended the etiquette class, right? They say, yes. The like, Renaissance great. man So let's class. implement what we learned today. Right. This is a great opportunity. And that'll just be like their signal to them, oh, yeah, that's right, to get back on the good foot. So I'm excited. R- Yes. I mean, what you say is important because even the work I do with a lot of people, you know, as I told you when I was doing some work with the uh, San Bernardino Alternative School, I guess you can say. Yes. And so what happened is these kids, in order to get back into regular school, they had to finish so many hours, all these different things. And the majority of the kids there, you know, they were from the foster care system. Mm. And so... To them, whenever they came in contact with somebody, their first thought was, I'm just a dollar sign to this person. Wow. All, all it is is that. And, you know, it's sort of it's heartbreaking. It is. And, and I remember this one class I had. I mean, this whole this class was different than all the rest mm. because you had every race in there, black, white, Mexican, and you even had an Asian in there. Mm-hmm. And so the thing I tell people is it's hard to do this because people are like, Oh, I, I want I want to work with you. I goes no because you don't have the right spirit. Hmm. And a lot of times, because you said about you are a woman of faith, mm-hmm. the thing a lot of people don't realize is that it's almost like if you walk in a room, it's that shows or it doesn't show. It's Absolutely. almost like people who've been through things they look at you, they look at the way you move and all mm-hmm. this stuff, and they almost already can size you up. Yes. And so you, I say you have about a it minute, takes- a minute, and you got to make that a connection long. with That's them. That's right. Or, or you're done. That's right. So I walked in this particular class, and, you know, I just looked at the way they were looking. They're like, and so, you know, I always try to say something to break the ice. Something. I goes, uh, I bet you guys are wondering what this short, bald head black man is doing here, don't you? <laughs> and the kids, they just laughed. They're like, oh, uh, 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 uh. And I told them, I'm here because I care about you. Mm. And the kid goes, oh, you don't care about us. How can you care about us? You don't even know us. You just met us. Mm. And so that gives you your time to explain to them yes. why you care. Yes. You know, even though I just met you, I care about you because I'm concerned about your future. Yes. And I want you to have a good future and enjoy life. And, you know, because they goes, oh, but this and that. I goes, no, then you have to realize that right now your conditions 
are forced on you more or less. You can't control them mm -hmm. because if you're in a foster care because your parents didn't want you, whatever, you know, you didn't choose that. Right. But once you get 18, you can make your own choices. Yes. And so how do you make choices different from where you are now and where you'll end up on this path? And so you're right. When you can do something and then you can go back to your mentor, you can go back to that person and see them later and say, oh, you know what you said really helped me out yes. or stuff as opposed to if you just say something, you, you're gone. Right. You know, it's just like a, somebody else blowing smoke again. Right. You know, but when you have there, then it's a connection because that's the difference between a relationship. Yes. I was waiting for the R word. You know, a relationship mm -hmm. and just a job because yes. now you've established a relationship. You don't have to see them in all the time or nothing, but you have a relationship. So that means that what you said, they take it more to heart because they feel like you care about right. it. Right. As opposed to somebody who is just a job. It's my job to get you here to there. And after that, it's like, you do it, you do it, you don't, you don't. You know, and so that's what I hear from you that you're doing it by this mentors. You're establishing relationships Absolutely. where you be able to come back I'm again. all about relationships. Right. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, because of my relationship capital, that's one of the reasons that everyone that I have reached out to thus far They've all given a resounding yes. Yes, I'm on the team, Jackie. Yeah. Yes, you can count on me. And also to your point, I remember when I was in like junior high school and we'd have these assemblies and some they'd whiz someone in, you know, some hot shot, and it would be a great, you, you know, you're all amped and pumped up. And as you can tell, I'm, I'm amped and pumped up all the time. Yeah, pump it up. So, you know, right? So next thing you know, they, they as quickly as they were in my life, speaking positive, they were whizzing right back out. There was no type of an opportunity to grow and to learn and to have any type of a relationship. And that's another one of the reasons that I have the different levels so that these children would have some congruence and some continuity. Right. You know, because that's what they're lacking. Like, that's why when you came in, they were right to say, well, you don't care anything about us. You, you don't even know us. The way that you know that something is of value is with your checkbook or your debit card in, in these days and your calendar. That's how you know. I knew that I was meeting with you here today. I value you. Right. I value keeping my word to myself first, but I value my relationship with you. Good. I'm glad you do, because if you weren't here, I'd be sitting here talking to the empty chair. I'd be like, <laughs> then I have to talk here and jump over there right? and back and, and forth. Right? be talking to yourself. Yeah, I do appreciate you coming. Yeah, and, and that's so important, because I think what we, especially in the target group that you're yes. getting. Yes. I mean, because you said something about you don't know the parents, the living situation. Don't know. Because the majority of them, or living in a single parent home, you know, shout out to men. There's a lot of single fathers taking Absolutely. care of their kids too. Absolutely. Because we, we forget about that. Yes. And, and, you know, we don't give them the credit, you know. And so shout out to all those parents. Yes. And even sometimes, like I do other work too. Mm -hmm. And these men I encounter, because it's mostly men I encounter, you know, I tell them the main thing is this. If you want to get your life back on track, you have to go and build a relationship that you've torn down. Mm -hmm. And majority of the time, that's with their kids. And like you say, these are the kids that we encounter. Yes. And so you have these kids, when people come in their life and leave out, they're used to it. Yes. And so whatever it is that you're doing, it's going to take you a while to get to them. Like you said, when they go out in public, mm -hmm. you want them to act a certain way and do a certain thing. But there were things like, you know, why should I? You're just here and I'm a guinea pig, more or less, and then you're going to be gone out of my life. And it's like, no, I'm not. Actually, one of the, we have several things in the hopper, if you will. Like, one of the things I envision is, is having sponsors and those sponsors having some type of a, an internship program that is just for the mentees right. that have gone through our program. That we have a job fair and it's just for the mentees that have gone through our program. And each one of them, there's no participation certificate. You have to actually have gone there to receive it. Right. Because I'm not putting my name on the line for you and you were, you know, flaking and shaking. I'm not, I'm not doing that. Well, and that's important. But you say putting your name on the line because that's important to people. They know, let's say, you know, I went through this program mm -hmm. and now I want to get a job. You know, can you vouch for me? Absolutely. And see, people have to realize that your word. It is that's that's like you know that's critical. Yes, that's that's more important than money because yes. you can have all the money in the world, but you're not dependable. You're right. always lying. You're always letting people down. Correct. Sooner or later, they're gonna not want to fool with you anymore. And so your word is critical. So when people go through this program, now they have access to people like this. Oh well, they can vouch for me. Mm -hmm. You know, then people say, oh, you went through this program. That's good because people come out of that program. Mm -hmm. Like you say, they're not just giving stuff. They're actually earning it. Yes. So I know if somebody came out of this program, 
then more up than not, they're going to be well. They're going to do well as a person, as an employee, or even for its continued education goes. Yes. Because it's amazing the people I come across, how smart they are. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and like I had this one guy, you know, in one of the programs, and, you know, I go around and ask, hey, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? You know, and so we talk, we talk. And then later, you know, I said, because he said he wanted to do something. I didn't quite understand. So a couple of weeks later, I goes, well, what is that? Mm -hmm. He goes, oh, that's when you grow weed and you sell weed. I said, oh, that's what you want to do? He goes, yeah. I goes, why? He goes, what else am I going to do? Mm. I told him, well, just from listening to you, you're very articulate. I can picture you being like an attorney or something like wow. that. I goes, because he, he said, you think so? Wow. I said, I do think so. Mm -hmm. He mm. was like, no, Mr. Bryant, really? Wow. I goes, really? Mm -hmm. He goes, oh, I never thought about that before. I goes, yeah, you're smart. You're this, you're that. I said, what kind of grades did you get in school? He goes, well, when I went, I got good grades. Mm -hmm. So after he told me, he's almost like a 4.0 student. Oh, my goodness. I goes, what do you want to waste your I mean, I'm not saying nothing wrong with it. Plenty of people do it, but you you have so much more potential, you know, to not only help yourself, but help people too. Yes. Because not only that you have the smarts, but you have the experience in life to know that everything and everybody's going through today, it may not be the same tomorrow, and you can help them. He goes, wow, I never thought that. He goes, but, you know, I can't dress like you and this. Other. You don't have to dress like me. Oh. I said, I tell you, if you really want to do something and people see you really want to do it, They'll help you. Absolutely. And that's why we consider them as emerging talent, just right. for that reason. Because you can look at the optics and think, oh, there's nothing there. You know, when you pour into someone or speak into someone, it's amazing what those words, what that belief. One of my monikers is that I believe in others more than they believe in themselves right. until they believe in themselves more. Right. Right? And, and so by doing that, imagine, like for me, when I was 17 and a half years old, my best friend, Felicia, I called her Fee Burger. Her dad, who I called dad, was an insurance broker. Mm. And one day I was coming home and he called me into the house and I thought, oh, what did I do? Right. Because, you know, I was one of the girls. I was like, what did I, oh, I just got off the bus, well, school bus. I couldn't have done anything from the school bus to their house. So he says, come here, I want to talk to you about something. I said, oh, okay. And he said, uh, you'd be great in insurance. And I said exactly what you said to Jimmy. I said, you think so, dad? Right. He said, absolutely. He laid all these different things out. I did become an insurance agent at 17 and a half years old. Wow. By the time I was 19, I was managing an insurance company in Beverly Hills. Wow. That's good. So that means that sometimes, you know, we don't believe in ourselves or we don't see in ourselves. Mm -hmm. But if you get somebody who sees it yes. in you and they can help you cultivate that yes. talent, that's what's critical. And that's, that's, that's good because that's what we both believe in. That's why we... Uh, we click so much yes. because it's like, wow, you know, even one of the kids that said, well, you know, you're here for money. I said, well, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I have to make a living. Yes, I can't. I, ha I have to go to Trader Joe's and buy Havarti cheese, and I can't do that with the intention. They, they ask for some money. Right, right. So, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, I am here for right, the money. Right, But that's not the main reason I'm here. No. You know, that's part of it because I have to make a living. But the other part it's like a score is because I want to help. Everybody in here. Yes. If it was up to me, everybody that come in contact, I want to have some kind of positive influence on them. Yes. Because I tell people, you don't know it, but sometimes your influence on people or effect on people mm -hmm. is nothing but just a smile. You can mm -hmm. smile. Hmm. That's true. You know, open a door or something <laughs> right, like that. Right, right, right. Hmm. You sound Yeah, op op open a door or something like that. Just things that you don't even think about can make someone's day. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that... You know, I've been through lots of things, and lots of challenges, overcome them, all of that. But I don't have a walking in the snow story with no shoes on. That's, uh -huh. not, that's just not been my existence, right. right? That does not mean that I cannot relate to, and it does not mean that I can't say what were some of the things that made it so that it's easier, more palatable for me. Right. Makes it so that I have the internal fortitude to keep getting up, right? And the biggest one for me by far has been my association. The rooms I've been able to sit into only because Jackie's my friend. Right. You know, and that's critical what you said about you don't have a walking in a store. In the snow. In the snow with, with no, no shoes. shoes story. Or, yeah. or stuff I like don't. that. I don't. It's good because you know what? We're going to take another break. Mm -hmm. And on the other side of it, we're going to pick up about something similar to that, but quite not that. Okay. We'll be back. Well, Effect the Show, your host Cornelius, Jackie, 
We'll be back on the other side of this commercial. Thanks. openings for one hour talk shows if you want to host a radio show now is the time make kcaa your flagship station our rates are affordable and our services are second to none we broadcast to a population of five million people plus we stream and podcast on all major online audio and video systems if you've been thinking about broadcasting a weekly radio program on real radio plus the internet contact our ceo at 281-599-9800 9800. You can Skype your show from your home to our Redlands, California studio where our live producers and engineers are ready to work with you personally. A radio program on KCAA is the perfect work from home avocation in these stressful times. Just type KCAARadio.com into your browser to learn more about hosting a show on the best station in the nation or call our CEO for details 281-599-9800. And now, the voices of KCAA with an exciting announcement. Want to hear NBC News or KCAA anywhere you go? Well, now there's an app for that. KCAA is celebrating 25 years and our silver anniversary with a brand new app. The new KCAA app is now available on your smart device, cell phone, in your car, or any place. Just search KCAA on Google Play or in the Apple Store. One touch and you can listen on your car radio, Bluetooth device, Android Auto, or Apple CarPlay. Catch the KCAA buzz in your earbuds or on the streets celebrating 25 years of talk, news, and excellence with our new KCAA app. Just do it and download it. KCAA celebrating 25 years. All right, welcome back to the E-Factor Radio Show. I'm your host Cornelius with my special guest Jackie. Okay, before we went to break, we were talking about something. And I know like a lot of times when we have these different programs, mm -hmm. they always have like people who do it. Now, I'm not down on them. Like, you know, ex-prisoners, gang bangers, or ex-drug addicts mm -hmm. that help the kids. But the thing about this is that we just don't want to let them think that, okay, in order for me to get help from an outside source, I have to have been in this type of situation. Because a lot of times, those are the programs that people fund, and those mm -hmm. are the programs yes. people contribute to. They go, oh, well, we want to contribute to that. But the goal of this is to get people before that, yes. and that way we can help them avoid that by helping them reach their potential and their intelligence and the level that it can be, be it college, trade school, or whatever. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, the impetus for, of it for me is because, again, when I was sharing about my association. Right. That doesn't mean I did not meet or know. I can tell you of some, you know, I can mm. drop a few Pookie and M's and some gang members' names and things of that nature that have a long resume, if you will. With that, though, I noticed that in the mentorship industry, the space, there is an inordinate number of people that are paraded and mentoring these children that are ex-gang members, ex-drug addicts, ex-prostitutes, XXX. Now, I definitely applaud them for their right. resiliency, yes. for them ascending past where they were. However, there needs to be, in my opinion, a balance on the scale. There needs to be something where they say, do I have to have gone through that for me to be in this program? Because a lot of them that will be assigned to us as our client students, a lot of them they will have maybe been disruptive in class or maybe they've had fights and things of that nature. And so what we are giving them the opportunity to do at that pivotal moment is to know you are at a crossroads, my friend. Right. This is where you could go. You could end up, it's not too late at all. You're just getting started. You're just getting your feet wet. You can talk to, say, Professor Maine about what, how, do you, how do you prepare yourself for college? Is math important? Is it important to go to school? Is it important for you to get your grades up? Why is that? Or speak to someone that is a retired sheriff or a current sheriff that says, hey, I don't want to see you outside of much more than mentorship. Right, exactly. I want to break bread with you. I don't want to be cuffing you. <laughs> you know what I mean? These things are serious and they're pivotal and they're important for each one of us that when we're saying we want to go out 
and make an impact. Everyone uses those buzzwords. No, we're about it. And that's why I said, it, can I parlay it into something that I experienced as, that has definitely been the filter for my life? I avoided a lot of garbage mm -hmm. because I didn't want the ones that were my Miss Gittleman. I didn't want Miss Gittleman to be disappointed in me. I didn't want Miss Haynes. I didn't want to let, let down Mr. LaCour. That I have a whole tribe that kept me straight. Even when I was a kid and I would bring my, uh, my report card because, you know, the neighbors all knew. I knew all the neighbors, you know. And so they knew it was report card day. Uh -huh. So I would have to go. I would hear them call me, Miss Jackie. Hi, Miss Patterson. How are you? Can I see your report card? Yes, ma'am. And I showed the report card. Jackie, you can do better. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, my gosh. So by the time I got home with my, my, my actual parent, I had already spoken to eight or nine of, of, of my tribe about what I could do better and that they expected me to. And you level up to whatever the expectation is. Right. And so I would love for someone to be a student to be able to say, you know, um, so how are you? What did you do? And instead of saying, don't do as I did, do different, I can say, well, here's what I did. Right. And they would be able, these mentors would be able to say, here's what I did, man, this is what I did. I, I, was, I grew up in the hood too, but I didn't let the hood grow up in me. Right. Well, I didn't, I didn't stop and show the neighbors my report card. I went home and said, oh, my teacher didn't give me my report oh, card. Oh, my stars in heaven. Yeah, head. yeah, you know. But these people, they do help. Everybody has their place. Like I said, we Absolutely. need a balance. Absolutely. Everybody has their place. And it's important that we do balance that. It's yes. important that we go before the people who are making these important decisions to let them know, hey, you know, there's different dynamics in every area. Yes. There's different needs. And we don't want to focus all of our energy in, on this particular group. Yes. You know, we got this group over here. We got these people who are doing well in school, but they need to have somebody take them to the next level. Right. You know, don't be afraid to reach out. And say, hey, you know, you've never been in trouble. You're a good kid. You're this. You know, let's help you. I mean, they have these programs now in school, whereas they do the off-campus teaching, what do they call the Excel program? Yes. Where they help kids prepare for school. Mm -hmm. We just do more of that. We need yes. to do more of that. And even agree. younger. I agree. Even young. And the problem is you can't wait till a kid is 10th, 11th grade and try to reach it. We have Absolutely. to start early yes. because the negative forces are there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's there every place they look. I mean... I have people, they're in a really good neighborhoods and all that stuff, you know, everything is good, but your kid comes in contact with that thing we call social media. Yes, sir. You know, and then they're influenced yes. by that. They goes, well, that's why I don't give my kid a phone. But yeah, but his friend at school has a phone, <laughs> right. you know, and so the influence is there. So we have to pour into them earlier. Mm -hmm. and we have to pour into them something positive. That's the goal. And the thing is, I've also realize that it can't always be tell them what they're doing wrong. Correct. Correct. What they're doing wrong. Even these young fathers, you know, we're always like, oh, you don't do this, you don't do that, you don't do this, you don't do that. No. Whatever they're doing right, we need to put more emphasis on that. Build that up. Right. Build that up. Build them up. Yes. You know, and let them know, hey, it's not all about the money. Of course, they need money, kids too. Mm -hmm. But you got to build them up because your presence in their life. Yes. That's what's critical. I know I did a class at the girls' juvenile facility. And so I, I go in this class and, you know, I'm like, wow. You know, then it hits me once I get there. You know, this is this is a, like a little girl's prison. Mm. You know? Wow. This is like a little girl's prison. Wow. And so when I walk in there, I'm, I'm talking to them. And, you know, they're, some of them are hardcore. And this one little mm. girl, she only weighed 16 pounds soaking wet. And she was like, oh, if somebody do this, I'd, I'd whack him and I'd do this and I'd whack wow. him and I'd kill him and I'd do this. I was like, God, I goes, you hardcore? Yeah, and this and that. Mm. I'm like, okay. And so then I asked a question. I goes, how many of you have fathers? Mm. And you know, this one girl, you know, you just get that one. We all have daddies. How you think we got here? I goes, okay, <laughs> you're right, you're right. <laughs> Well, let me put it this way. How many of you have fathers in your lives yes. that really care about you? The room got quiet. Mm. Like maybe out of 20 girls, four raised their mm. hands. Mm. You know, so I asked, well, how many of you wish you had a father in your life that cared about you? And while they cried and raised their hands, I goes, wow, mm. that's what we need. Yes, yes. And as a card-carrying daddy's girl, uh -huh. Father power is so important, yes. and that's one of the main reasons that I wanted to get black and brown men 
Right. I said, because if we get the men together, the whole world falls into place. That's true. And just let us know what kind of men are, are you talking I know you mentioned earlier about the sheriff and the fireman. Let's tell us some people on your team. Okay. Besides so, me. Besides you, well, okay. So we have a licensed marriage and family therapist. Because, and, and the main reason for that is because I want them to have tools right. for them to be able to cope and to excel. Because uh, without that, what good is all of this? Correct. If we don't empower them and not just make it cliche. Uh, let's see who else we have. So we have the respect fireman, we have the sheriff, we have a gentleman that works for the DOJ, Department of Justice. I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. I have a whole list. And then we have a few that are pending that are making me very excited that I'll share with you. Oh, a, a, a little unique one. Uh, a gentleman that is uh, part of a fraternity. Oh. And I said, I want there to be a different type of tribe that they're able to see. And they know that the only reason or the only way you get to be into that fraternity is by going to college. Right. And so that's something I'm like, going, oh, yeah. So it, it's, it's quite a few. I mean, and the list is growing every day. Right. It's funny because I've done work with sororities. I've done work with fraternities. Ha, 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 yes. Dance, dance, yes. dance, you know, right. and all that stuff. So that is important to show them that. Yes. But, you know, and it's critical that whoever gets involved with you, mm -hmm. that they, they have a sense of purpose. Yes. Because you never want to get to the point where as you have people with such an elevated mindset right. that they make these people feel inferior or insecure. Yeah, we have entrepreneurs, bank presidents on board. Uh, I'm working right now, you know, um, for some, some city council members so that they can see about government and learn all of these different... My goal is to have it as diverse as possible. Right. And so I'm never going to be satisfied with my list. Even if everybody says yes, I'm never going to be satisfied with it because there's always more room to grow and to expand. Right. Expansion is critical. Yes. You know, once you get here... And the thing about expanding gets out here, out here. And then people hear about the program. Mm -hmm. Even kids hear about the program. They're like, oh, I want to join that. Yes. Even with the classes I do at these different places, people are like, oh, you were part of the Renaissance Man class? So it goes, oh, I want to be part of the class. I want to yeah. be part of the class. And yeah. you would think, okay, grown men, they want to be part of this class. <laughs> Whereas before, it's like, I'm not going to have some man tell me about <laughs> this and that, you know. But right. then once they see it and see yes. the effectiveness in yes. it. Yes. And that's, that's, that's what it's all about is like, you know. When you expand yes. more and more, then people say, okay, well, instead of me worried about doing this, I'm going to be part of this program. And what will make it good is that when people come out the program, mm -hmm. the results. Mm -hmm. Because you can have all the programs you want to, Absolutely. but if you're not getting results and after, like you said, stand in contact with them after mm -hmm. they finish the program, mm -hmm. and you can say, oh, well, this person did this, this person did that. Then they can come say, you know what, before this program, I had no thoughts of college or anything whatsoever. And we can't forget about the blue collar workers. Absolutely. I mean, we get this college thing and all that, but you know, everybody's not college material. Absolutely. I, I wasn't college material. I told you, I didn't take my report card home. Go, y'all, look at my report card. <laughs> you know, but I did commercial constructs for thirty-seven years, mm -hmm. and so a lot of people are good at different things. Absolutely. So we just want to whatever it is that you're good at, we yes. want to emphasize that. Yes. Until you take your talents and use it for that. It's funny that you mentioned that because there's a gentleman that's on my wish list right now. I haven't even reached out to him yet. And he has a smog business, very successful, in I believe it's in Riverside. I'm going to send him this little snippet after I get the recording and say, hey. <laughs> hey, gentlemen. And it's, it's funny because he, had, he grew up, I believe it was in L.A. or in Compton, one of the two. And he has a university of teaching young men the smog game. Uh -huh. And that's definitely blue collar. And so I've also reached out to a couple of uh, individuals that own landscaping businesses saying, right. and so it's these types of, it's not a, it won't be a one size fits all. Mm -hmm. It'll be more of, well, what are you interested in? Right. And if I don't know someone, I'll go make a new friend. If that's, that's what you're looking for. That's so, it. Yeah. Yep. I grew up in Compton, too. So, you know, people look at certain places, certain cities, when they hear about it, they only think of what they see on the news. Yes. But it's good. People come from everywhere. Absolutely. So don't never be ashamed of where you came from. That's right. Don't be ashamed of where you are. That's right. Just work and do your thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny. You know, we're going to take a break and then we're going to be come back and close it. But I just want to say something on the other side of this because you mentioned about the marriage and family therapist. Okay? okay, sure. All right, we'll be back in just about whatever minutes we come back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> KCAA Radio.
Radio has openings for one-hour talk shows. If you want to host a radio show, now is the time. Make KCAA your flagship station. Our rates are affordable and our services are second to none. We broadcast to a population of 5 million people. Plus, we stream and podcast on all major online audio and video systems. If you've been thinking about broadcasting a weekly radio program on Real Radio plus the Internet, contact our CEO at 281-599-9800. 281-599-9800. You can Skype your show from your home to our Redlands, California studio where our live producers and engineers are ready to work with you personally. A radio program on KCAA is the perfect work from home avocation in these stressful times. Just type kcaaradio.com into your browser to learn more about hosting a show on the best station in the nation or call our CEO for details. 281-599-9800. And now the voices of KCAA was an exciting announcement. Want to hear NBC News or KCAA anywhere you go? Well, now there's an app for that. KCAA is celebrating 25 years and our silver anniversary with a brand new app. The new KCAA app is now available on your smart device, cell phone, in your car, or any place. Just search KCAA on Google Play or in the Apple Store. One touch and you can listen on your car radio, Bluetooth device, Android Auto, or Apple CarPlay. Catch the KCAA buzz in your earbuds or on the streets, celebrating 25 years of talk, news, and excellence with our new KCAA app. Just do it and download it. KCAA, celebrating 25 years. Okay, okay, welcome back to the E-Factor Radio Show. I'm your host, Cornelius, with special guest, Jackie. Jackie, I know that you had said that you have someone who's a marriage and family therapist. Yes. On time. Matter of fact, that's who our next guest is going to be on the 24th. Remember, everybody, two weeks from the day, one of our favorites, Harold K. Weber. He's a marriage and family therapist. He's been here before, and you know, everybody loves him. And <laughs> So we're, we're going to get into some deep conversations with him. That's awesome. We're going to have fun, too. Because, you know, we were talking about the men. Yes. How important the men yes. are in the kids' life, the girls' life. It's true. And so we're, we're going to talk about that because next year we're going to have a tour. And so we're going to start breaking ground on that for men's conferences. Mm. It's called Men, Responsibilities, and Expectations. Mm. So, you know, you have all these expectations and all this stuff. But, you know, it's like we said. You're always telling what they're doing wrong. Yes. And some... They don't know what to do that's right. That's absolutely true. And, you know, but we pound about the things that are wrong, you know, but we don't say enough about the things that are right, especially these young fathers. Yes. I mean, because you figure a lot of these young guys, they never had fathers. Yes. Okay, but they're having their kids now, and they're, they're trying so hard mm-hmm. to be good fathers, and, and all. But they, they're so much against me. And now, when I was in school, elementary school, you know, on Father's Day, we made something and, mm-hmm. you know, or got a tie. You know, something that they really didn't yeah, want, right. but at least we recognize them. Yes. Now, on Mother's Day, they do all this stuff. Nothing on Father's Day. Mm. Not even a little piece of clay with your handprints mm. on it. You know, I remember so, that. Yeah, mm-hmm. see? So we're, we're going to get into that with, with uh, Harold K. Weber. And also, he's my pastor. Nice. And so he can really relate from all these different angles. Mm-hmm. And that will make it so good That's when awesome. he's on here. That's awesome. You know, we got spiritual. We got this. We got that. And. You know, sometimes I, I want to ask him, Pastor, do you ever feel like taking the flock to the edge and running them off the cliff? But nah, nah, I'm wow. just playing. Wow. I'm just playing. That's, that's why I, out of bounds. Yeah, I am, but that's 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 why I'm not a pastor. <laughs> right? Because, you know, it, it, it's all these things that lined up. But, but he's, he's a great host and a great guest. And so we're going to be breaking ice on that. But before we go, yes. for your business, you know, you want to give anybody some information on how to reach you, how to contact you? Well, our website is so funny. I was sharing with Cornelius earlier today that in preparation for here, I was on uh, the phone for probably like an hour and 45 minutes about my website, but it's at least a little bit palatable, so give me some grace and mercy. It's much more than mentorship.com, and you'll see some of the team that we've assembled, some of the categories, and also what our mission statement is and uh, things of that nature. And if you wanted to uh, reach out to me, you can just go site, S-I-T-E, at much more than mentorship.com and reach me. Okay, good. See, I, I thought mine was long because mine is info at the renaissance man dot com dot es. 
Yeah, him for the Renaissance man, Dai. That's and people are like, oh, that's too long. I'll, I'll shorten it up for you. It's only long one time. In for the Renaissance man, it's only long one time. Yeah, so I shortened it up. And like you said, with this class, like you said, we teach life skills, leadership skills, yes. and all these things. Yes. And like those kids, we're going to have those kids prepared mm -hmm. to go out anywhere yes. and do anything. And it's for people too. And I was talking to someone. I, I just want to share this because it's so funny sure. to me. Is that I've been getting a lot of calls lately from mothers hmm. about their sons. And guess how old their sons are? How old? In their 30s. In the 30s, they're like, oh, my son needs to know this. He needs wow. to know this. And I goes, I think I shared this before. And I said, well, if your son's in his 30s, and he more than likely won't come. You know, and you'll pay for him. But I, I'm going to have a no money back policy. <laughs> so when you pay for him, <laughs> when you pay for that him part. and he doesn't show up, you'll be like, oh, you didn't do a good job on him. Mm -hmm. You know, but that that's important. So like you say, our focus is this is good, what you're doing is good, but we can't forget, like I said, balance. Correct. Balance. So just, balance okay. is... It's options. It's like, it's like right. offering a plate of cookies. Not everyone likes chocolate chip. Some right. people like snickerdoodles. Some I, like yeah, oatmeal. Okay. And so we are offering options for the school district who will be um, the one that we are accountable to. Right. And we want to make sure that we are saying, listen, I'm not knocking anyone what they're doing. Right. Let them do them. I'm just saying, can we just elevate the game? Can right. we just offer some other options? Can we have them meet not everyone who has the walking in the snow without the shoe story? Can we have the ones that they said, you know what? It was tough. It was hard for me to do the, this, that, and the other. I had to walk through the gang infestation to get to my house to be able to study, but I did it. I made it. Can we have that as opposed to everyone that you're interfacing with or the majority of them that you're interfacing with, they're all an X something. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Yep, but I think... That is important, like you said, we're not knocking them. Not knocking anyone. You know, and the thing is that I, you know, I go to these different places like you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm the only bald head guy there. <laughs> and so, you know, you, you listen to all these other people talk. Yes. And stuff. And then the thing that's surprising is I, I just want the audience and the kids to know money is not the key. Mm -mm. Because you can have money and still be the worst person Absolutely. in the world. Absolutely. And they start talking about all their different situations and stuff. And I goes, wow, you know, what you, what you have is the same exactly. as what they have. Exactly. But you, it's just on a different level. You know, you, your, kids, your kids are in and out of trouble, but mm -hmm. you cover it up. You buy them out. Mm -hmm. Your kids are on drugs. This happens. That happened. You know, you're getting divorced. I'm getting divorced. You know, yeah. this has happened. That's happened. And so we don't always want to make it seem like it's just our problem that we're having these things. What we said. I mean, this is a problem for everybody. Absolutely. But we just all need to have a form where we can come and be honest with each other or honest with ourselves mainly, you know, because if Jamik is doing this and Michael's doing this, they're both doing the same things, but it's a different view, a different look for each person who's doing it. So we're doing the same thing, but we're looked at differently as opposed That's to someone true. else. That's true. And then also from a business standpoint, the riches are in the niches. So having everyone as your client, someone in business says, I want, I want to serve everyone. No, I don't want to serve everyone. I want to serve who I am called to. Right. And let someone else serve who they are called to. Correct. And this is who I'm called to. All right, good. All right, well, we're going to have you back on the show because our calling is almost over, called time. Okay. But we're going to pick this up because that way has your program gets more and more going and you'll be able to give us more information on it because this is really important. I would love to. Really important. So thanks for coming and I will see you when I see you. That's right. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you again. Thank you. All right. Bye everybody. Goodbye. Thank you, Inland Empire, for listening to KCAA Radio.
Hi, I'm Kaylee Spear, a licensed agent with Litchfield Insurance Associates here in Beaumont. A large portion of Americans don't have life insurance or don't have enough. Whether you need a temporary policy, something to help with income during retirement, or making sure your final expenses are taken care of, having life insurance is an act of love and security for your whole family. Having a local trusted agent makes navigating through the sometimes complex world of life insurance so much easier. And I would love to be the one to help you. I'm Kaylee Spear. For your free consultation, people are calling 951-769-0005. 951-769-0005. Eat bread. Lose weight. That's right. Eat bread. Lose weight. Hello, everybody. I'm Joseph from Joseph's Organic Bakery. We offer ancient grain bread from the Bible. That's right. Ancient grain bread from the Bible. We stone grind daily, ferment using sourdough, and bake that same day. Everything is then shipped fresh to our customers nationwide. So if you're interested, in feeling good, improving your digestion, knocking down your blood pressure, and balancing your blood sugar, pick up the phone, give us a call, 954-541-4062, 954-541-4062, or you can order online, veganbakerymiami.com, veganbakerymiami.com. With 60 years of fascinating facts, this is The Man from Yesterday. Back in time, this time, 1957, ABC TV says it's excited about another potential young star when it debuts Maverick. In September, the series stars newcomer James Garner as a crafty traveling card poker player. Maverick is a legend of the West. And from this time in 1994, CBS Entertainment's going to debut a new show, Touched by an Angel with Roma Downey and Della Reese. Della Reese is known primarily as a singer. Roma Downey is best known for her portrayal as Jackie Kennedy Onassis on an NBC TV miniseries. There was nobody there, Nick. Maybe you've had enough, huh? He can't see me, Nicholas, because I'm an angel. My name is Monica. An angel. <laughs> an angel named Monica. And from this time in 1963, Merv Griffin says he has a new game show idea. Merv Griffin says he's been fooling around with the format for about six months, and he just about has it down. The name of that game show will be called Jeopardy. And now, here's the star of Jeopardy, Art Fleming. Good morning, thank you, players. Thank you, Don Pardo. Thank you, my friend. Good morning. I hope it's a good one for you. Thank you. With more at manfromyesterday.com. One of the best ways to build a healthier local economy is by shopping locally. Teamster Advantage is a shop local program started by Teamster Local 1932 that has brought together hundreds of locally owned businesses to provide discounts for residents who make shopping locally their priority. Everything from restaurants like Corky's to fun times at SB Raceway and much, much more. If you're not currently a Teamster and you want access to these local business discounts, contact Jennifer at 909-889-8377, extension 224. Give her a call. That number again is 909-889-8377, extension 224. NBC News Radio. I'm Chris Caraggio. Team USA has won the gold in men's basketball. They beat host Team France today in Paris 98-87 to win the fifth straight gold medal for Team USA in the hardwood and 17th overall. Steph Curry hit four three-pointers late in the game to secure the victory. Former President Trump's campaign says it was hacked with some of its internal communications sent to Politico. Politico says it began getting emails from an anonymous account that had documents from inside Trump's organization. The campaign blamed foreign sources hostile to the U.S. and went 
on to cite a report by Microsoft yesterday that said Iranian hackers sent phishing emails in June to a ranking member on a presidential campaign. The emails consisted of internal communications from a senior Trump campaign official, although it's unknown exactly what information was obtained. Both former President Trump and Vice President Harris are continuing to campaign this weekend. Harris and running mate Tim Walls will end their five-day battleground state tour with a joint rally in Las Vegas after campaigning in Arizona yesterday. Trump, meantime, is expected to take part in campaign fundraisers in Wyoming and Colorado. President Biden says defeating former President Trump is the most important thing in November's presidential election. In an interview that will air on CBS's A New Sunday Morning, Biden said, we must, we must, we must defeat Trump. He talked about when he ran for president in 2020 that he thought of himself as a transition president. The FDA is approving the first needle-free alternative to the EpiPen. Here's Dina Kodiak. It's a single-use nasal spray to treat allergic reactions in emergencies. Nephi from ARS Pharmaceuticals.